Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And we have a teaching center that provides hands-on courses for dentists. They're looking to improve their skills and increase their knowledge. We have a decent YouTube channel. It's growing. We have about 22 videos at this time. And I'd like to hear your feedback on any topics you'd like to see me uh, show videos on. Happy to try my best. Well, today we have something different. Today we have a contest where I want to test your knowledge about how you'd want to treat something. This is a patient that we saw recently and this is the mid-treatment photo of the amalgam removed and the caries that you see there remaining is uh, pretty firm and it did not encroach upon the pulp so that's not the issue. So let me set up the contest for you. This is a 31 year old patient. She's healthy and she's complaining of cold sensitivity in tooth number 30. She can actually point to it and occasional sharp pain when biting on hard foods. She has a normal periapical radiograph, a normal bite wing radiograph. The radiographs do not reveal any caries and the apical area is clean. There's no apical pathology. There's an existing occlusal amalgam, there was, that was uh, defective. The occlusion is ideal, no interferences in any excursive pathways at all. The tooth tests vital and there's no history of spontaneous pain. So the diagnosis here or assessment was recurrent decay, healthy periodontium. She has no periodontal pockets, no bleeding on probing, no furcation involvement. And our plan was to disassemble the existing restoration and determine the optimal treatment. So the question is for the contest, what is your clinical plan to solve the patient's chief complaint? Finances are not an issue and the patient is not concerned about aesthetics, but wants something that's going to be long lasting. And so for this contest, the 10 best answers will receive a 25% off single-use coupon on all items purchased in our store. And we have a lot of cool stuff from burrs, hand pieces, teeth, uh, hand instruments, uh, even dental materials. Check it out. The contest ends midnight, September 16th. Good luck. Well, hi, Dr. Stevenson back again and just wanted to show you what we came up with in this particular case. The first thing we need to realize is the tooth is in fact vital and the diagnosis is reversible pulpitis with normal periapical tissues. An endodontic diagnosis involves a pulpal diagnosis and an apical diagnosis. There is an obvious crack running mesial distally and it's not simply just an undermined cusp. If you look carefully at the upper image, the crack does not and did not extend down the root based on the normal periodontal findings. We did not find a narrow pocket that would be evidence of a root fracture. It's important to remember that any form of direct restoration will not stop the crack, whether it's bonded or not. A liner of bioactive endodontic cement, in this case MTA, was placed in the deepest area and then that was tacked down with a resin modified glass enamel liner followed by a bonded resin buildup. The tooth could have been restored coronally with any form of coronally supporting restoration like a full gold crown, or perhaps an all ceramic restoration. We chose in this particular case to do a 7 8 crown. An onlay could only be used if the cracks could be adequately contained. Great to do an onlay, but we have to remember that onlays don't have the binding supporting effect that you can get from something that's more uh, axially containing like a crown or 7 8 crown. In this particular case we treated the case with a 7 8 gold crown back in 2015. No root canal was required and the patient is asymptomatic today. So if you believe your answer was really close to this and I think we have lots of really amazing answers please email us at info at stevensondentalsolutions.com and we'll get you that coupon. Thank you very much.